I'm going to be talking about my experience as the curator of India's first standalone national pavilion at the 54th Venice Biennale. Uh, it was a very uh, important mandate because it carried with it the responsibility of uh, addressing what is most urgent for us on the contemporary Indian art scene. And I called the exhibition, everyone agrees it's about to explode. The reason for choosing that title was to suggest that our situation today is full of plural, diverse energies, but also that it is a situation of emergency. Whether we are artists or curators or critics or participants in politics, we live in a society and a polity that is explosive. And therefore, as artists and curators, we need to be responsive to that. Not by creating political art, but by creating exhibitions where viewers not only receive aesthetic experience, but they are also able to reflect and inquire into the political and the social and the cultural situations from which that art arises. So I will be discussing my choices of artistic position. I'm going to be talking about the four artists I chose, Zarina Hashmi, Praneet Soy, Gigi Skaria, and the Desire Machine Collective. And I'm going to situate them in terms of certain questions that I see to be important. One of them is, what is the meaning of national representation today? Can you represent a nation in any serious way? From my point of view, the idea of national identity has no meaning at all. If you look at a nation, what you are looking at is a set of crises and predicaments and questions. So I am interested in arguments about the idea of India. What I am interested in, and this is where the pavilion grows out of, is in looking at artists whose citizenship is not a territorial one. I am interested in cultural citizenship. I am interested in artists who, even if they don't live in India or don't have an Indian passport, are committed to the predicament of India. They contribute to our understanding of it. And I'm also concerned with opening up a new atlas of references for Indian art. So it was very important to me not to do the usual top 10, not to go by mechanisms of validation that come from the gallery system or the auction house circuit, but to look at artistic positions that take up new kinds of risk that work in other kinds of economies of production. So Zarina Hashmi is important to me because it reminds us that you don't have to be young to be contemporary. This is a, a distinguished artist in her 80s and she works with woodcuts. So through her I make the argument that the contemporary is neither age specific nor medium specific. I choose to have the Desire Machine Collective because they're based in Guwahati and make a very powerful claim to globality despite not living in metropolitan India. And at the same time, by positioning them within this national pavilion, I want to remind all of us that the nation is not to be confined to the few metropolitan centers. We need to be able to look at what is seen as the periphery. The Northeast is, is an extremely rich cultural zone, and we need to be able to acknowledge its presence in any conception of India that we might have. Gigi Skarya is important to me because he represents the very complex experiences of internal migration as a Keralaite who's lived in Delhi for a very long time. So through his art, we come to terms with all the asymmetries of communication and belonging and not belonging that you face as a migrant within your own country. This also helps us assess this very strange experience of being Indian today. And Praneet Soy interests me greatly because he has what I call a zigzag practice. He lives between Amsterdam and Calcutta. Part of his work unfolds at the level of the global biennial circuit, but he also, as an integral part of his practice, returns to the, the bylanes of North Calcutta to work with marginal economies of production. He works there with uh, letterpress printers who are going out of business. He works with uh, people who make idols for festivals. So this is, a, this is a practice that replenishes itself in very, very different ways. So 
through all of these artists, I'm concerned to present artistic practices that are complex, that are complicated, that are distributed over different locations, and that are replenished by very diverse and even mutually unrelated sources. And I think that's the only way that one can really offer a true testament to the vitality and vibrancy of a national art scene, not by taking the easy way out and choosing the top 10, which is a statistical exercise. It's not a curatorial.